Thank you very much, uh, Madam President, members of the European Parliament, ladies and gentlemen. I am truly honored to stand before you today in this esteemed chamber. Your invitation to address this assembly symbolizing the unity and diversity of Europe is a privilege I hold in high regard. I extend my heartfelt thanks to all of you, the distinguished representatives of 450 million citizens across 27 member states. Madam President, I am particularly grateful for your gracious welcome, which reflects the spirit of solidarity and cooperation that this assembly embodies. This eminent institution plays a critical role in shaping policies and decisions that affect not only Europe, but also its partners around the world, including Kenya. Let me express my sincere gratitude for your support in the imminent conclusion of the economic partnership agreement between the European Union and Kenya. This is a major leap forward in our trade and economic relationship. The EU remains one of our most important trading allies, accounting for more than a fifth of Kenya's global exports. I must emphasize the impact of this agreement extends far beyond trade statistics. It opens a world of opportunities, facilitating not only the exchange of goods, but also ideas and innovations. It is a bridge between people and cultures and continents. These are difficult times, no doubt. We find ourselves amidst a formidable storm of challenges, each not only complex in its own way, but also deeply interconnected. New and renewed international conflict and wars, as witnessed most recently, as witnessed most recently in Ukraine, Israel, and Gaza, the Sahel, the Sudan, Somalia, the DRC, creating widespread human suffering and deepening divisions in a period where global collaboration and unity are of paramount importance. Democracy is under pressure in many parts of the world and multilateral institutions, once the hope for international solidarity are struggling to maintain broad-based acceptance, relevance, and effectiveness. At the same time, progress towards the Sustainable Development Goals is unraveling. Rising interest rates and looming debt distress make it much harder for countries to address their own socioeconomic challenges. High cost of living, fiscal strain, and migration are weakening international solidarity. And most existentially, the world, as a UN Secretary General reminded us recently, is literally on fire. The era of global boiling. It used to be global warming. Emphasizing the severe and escalating impact of climate change. The escalating severity of climate change is particularly acute and poignant in Africa, a continent that despite it, its minimal contribution to global emissions, finds itself at the forefront of environmental vulnerability. In Africa, with less buffers to address climate change challenges, we feel the impact more directly and more acutely. Consider, for example, the significant influence of high inflation rates on voting behaviors in your region, and I'm told you're going to elections shortly. Now imagine the impact of a year-on-year -year food price inflation exceeding 10% in sub-Saharan African countries where food makes up a third of household expenses. These challenges are not isolated. They are interconnected layers of a complex historical, economic, and environmental narrative that the continent endures. 
Africa still carries the scars of colonialism with, which remain visible in the economic and institutional dependencies that continue to hinder progress and perpetuate social and political fragility. As acknowledging and acknowledging these issues is important, but focusing solely on them risks obscuring the broader horizon and opportunity. The adversarial North versus South dynamic has not served us well, denying us the opportunity to leverage each other's strengths. Similarly, the East versus West divide is untenable and counterproductive, working against the interests of all of us. Climate change has introduced a new dimension into this complex equation. While it poses an existential threat, climate change has also emerged as a leveling force, equalizing us all in the face of a shared global challenge, transcending all divides, north, south, east, west, develop or developing. <clears throat> Collectively, therefore, we have the means to make progress. Advanced technology, robust financial systems, and dynamic markets, alongside pioneering advantages in various sectors, are key assets of the global north. Historically, the Global South has played a vital role in supporting North's industrialization by providing raw materials and markets. Now, as we navigate a new era of global interdependence, this needs to evolve into a reciprocal relationship, a shift towards a more balanced and equitable global partnership with the deliberate transfer of technologies and intentional flow of capital to the Global South. And to this also means a seat at the table to look for solutions that work for all of us in a spirit of cooperation and mutual understanding. <clears throat> Thus, it is essential to reassess long-standing assumptions that sometimes are not true, rethink perceived barriers, and question default decisions. We need to be bold and strategic, and also take the, uh, the decisive step towards structural shift required to fulfill the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and keep global warming at 1.5 degrees centigrade. This was precisely the premise of the inaugural Africa Climate Summit that I hosted in Nairobi in September. The summit provided a platform not just to discuss the challenges we face, but to view them through the lens of solutions and opportunities. Therefore, I'm hopeful because there exists a real opportunity, an opportunity to reach sustainable, equitable prosperity for all of humanity, an opportunity for the European Union to accelerate its, net, its race to net zero, decarbonize its industry, and build the economy of the future, and an opportunity for Africa to provide security and stability for all Africans while taking its rightful place in the 21st century economy. The Africa Climate Summit culminated in the Nairobi Declaration, which sets out the vision and a pathway for Africa to be a vital part of the global solution to the existential climate change challenge that we all face. The declaration captures the consensus of the African government leaders for climate positive growth. We have the world's biggest untapped renewable energy potential, the youngest and fastest growing workforce and human capital, and relevant natural resources and assets. 60%, for example, of the world's best solar potential is in Africa, as well as 60% of the remaining unused arable land in the world. These assets create an inherent ability for Africa to produce green from the start 
cost-competitive products and services and to provide some of the highest quality carbon removal services anywhere in the world.